Welcome back to Los Angeles, and welcome to the Heroes of the Dorm Tournament. We're playing Heroes of the Storm through this collegiate tournament overall. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Trixler, and joining me is, of course, Jester. Yes, sir. I do preside over my four courts, but so far we've had four matches of really dominant gameplay here in Heroes of the Dorm. And, you know, that means that four in, four left to go, because we got to figure out who's going to that epic eight. Before we jump into the brackets, what is Heroes of the Storm? Well, we got a quick little video to let you guys know at home if you just joined us. Welcome to Heroes of the Storm, Blizzard Entertainment's action-packed team brawler. Players can choose from a variety of Blizzard heroes, each with unique strengths and weaknesses, to create five-player team compositions that support versatile strategies. These strategies are then put to the test on a diverse set of battlegrounds, each with their own unique objectives. Hire the Ghost Pirate Blackheart. Summon a powerful Grave Golem. Every battleground is different and presents a unique environment for competition. However, the criteria for victory is constant. Destroy the opposing team's core. Heroes will grow in power and talent over the course of a single game as they take out minions, enemy fortifications, and of course, the opposing team's heroes. Your effectiveness at teamwork and collaborative play will make or break you. So as you can see, Heroes of the Storm is a bit strategic. You may have to, uh, you have to take out the opponent's core, but it's not as easy as that. We've had some crazy games over the last couple of hours. Jester, can you give us a, a recap of what we're seeing? Absolutely. So, so far, everything best of three, but it's the t Super 16. It, they weren't always the Super 16. They were originally part of a pool of over 880 teams uh, from, call from over 460 colleges all across North America. These are the top 16 elite. And so far, we've had four sets of matches. And you can see here, Western Ontario, the players from Canada have advanced over Assumption College. Yeah, the best of the best is playing today. And you can tell here. So Western Ontario um, just advanced. Texas A&M has advanced as well. Arizona State, which, by the way, has been a major pick for a lot of players that have done their own fantasy brackets, too, 14% actually. 14% overall. Yeah, to That's win a phenomenal the tournament. Number. That's huge. Yeah. It's big. Then, of course, Connecticut has advanced as well over Illinois. We just witnessed that on a stream. So welcome so far. We've got a few more matches to look at today. I, in particular, am excited for Kansas State versus Cal Berkeley. Um, some major, uh, first off, I'm from that area. So excited to watch Kansas <laughs> potentially do well as they were actually underdogs for a lot of uh, uh, people that did pick their brackets. And they're doing great against a team that was actually picked to be one besides Arizona State, Cal Berkeley. Yeah, we, we talked about this a little bit earlier with Arizona State. We said, all right, you know, number two pick. But that means that somebody was picked a little bit higher than them and it is Cal Berkeley. Uh, it was 24 and a little bit more percent that said, yeah, they're going to take it. They're number one. And they have a very powerhouse roster. That they do. So uh, Jester will be starting with the next match pretty darn soon here. So let's go ahead and check out who will be watching. It is a Mighty Churros versus the Internal Envy, which, by the way, is Rutgers University. They were only picked, I believe, 5% to even make it this far. They are underdogs. They are 100% the underdog story. 5% overall with all the bracket generations. That is a really really low number. In fact, nobody even even got close to 5% other than them. But Rutgers, I mean, it's going to be them. This is their time to shine. Eternal Envy is their team name. But Indiana University, 11% from the Mighty Churros. That's uh, more than double the fan base, more or less, of Rutgers. Yeah, so we'll have to see if Indiana University can live up to the hype as they'll be, ta the hype as they'll be taking on Rutgers University. The Mighty Churros, of course, against Eternal Envy. So checking out the roster for the blue team, the Mighty Churros, it will be Wilted, Buck Nasty, Dilactra, Graves Robber, and Kays. Oh, the Graves Robber, because his last name is J uh, Jordan Graves. Oh, clever. That's, uh, clever. Yeah, sometimes times you're going to see those contractions, but uh, definitely some players with some fans, as we said, 11% overall said that they're going to make it here. Let's see if they can actually go into the Epic Eight, but the underdog story that we're going to be focusing on is Rutgers University. Who's playing on that team? Is there any name that are going to jump out at us, but Guardian Wisp, Fate, Benapple. <laughs> Fantastic. Love it. Thames and Piliatopus. All right, that'll be a fun name to uh, yeah. accommodate throughout the game. Hopefully, he's making tons of plays to make it extra fun for why, us. Why you do this, John McDonald? Why, why, why you do this? Why you got to be like that? That's okay, though. We'll totally uh, walk into it. I'm uh, really excited to check out this map, but let's go ahead and check out uh, the first map of the, uh, the entire series. It will be Cursed Hollow. 
All right, so once again, our mainstay first round map for all these best of threes. Curse Tunnel, a lot of ground to cover. You got three lanes, that means you got to split up three ways. Your ultimate goal, cursing your enemies. And how do you do that? You collect tributes. Three tributes going to the Raven Lord will actually curse out the opponents. And that means you have a really good opportunity to push down. Alternatively, go for the mercenary camp. Six of them in total on this map. They can really start augmenting the power of a push, especially those grave golems that you see right there. When you are cursed, you can't fight back too much, and that could actually lead into some powerful pushing to take down the core. We've seen a lot of interesting games so far on Curse Tella. It's one of those battlegrounds that has a lot of strategy and a lot of flexibility in what you and your team want to do. You can express yourself as a team on this battleground, and it's a great first start for us all. So uh, we're going to be going into the draft pretty soon here. I'm just yep, kind of curious ready, what right exactly now, will be the first hero. It looks like it'll be Jaina uh, being picked up by Kays here for the blue team. Yeah, so uh, Jaina as a very popular first pick. Not too surprising though, Taranda on the other side of things. We have seen her as a first pick potential, but that is absolutely a combo you want to break up. And at the same time, you get a great partner there with the Diablo. Yeah, nice pick up here. We've seen this energy before. It wasn't ex executed to the best potential, but we can totally see what Internal Envy will be doing with this, as they seem to be very confident with that choice. The Marty Chiros, I don't know what they'll be falling up into. I'm assuming some kind of a support here will be great. You want to have someone that can help out uh, Kays as well as some kind of damage dealer. It looks a Graze Robber will be picked up uh, that Bala, which is a hero that we've been seeing in every single match. She is the most popular, one of the most effective, and one of the most picked heroes wow. here in Heroes of the Dawn. That is no support, sir. That is the Sylvanas, the Banshee Queen, and this is a diehard damage lineup from the Mighty Churros. They're saying we're good with whatever else. As long as we get these three popular ladies pushing for us here in Cursed Hollow, we're going to have a good time. The uh, Mighty Churros pick up the three hooded ladies, and man, can they put out some damage like crazy. Looking at the internal envy, what do they follow up into? A lot of the damage has been taken away from them. They pick up Rhaegar here, which is going to be great for the uh, support heals that we've been seeing. Ilden could be a choice here. However, Ilden diving into those three ladies. Yeah, that's dangerous. That's dangerous. So we see someone a little bit more passive here, someone that can poke from the side. It's going to be Banana Apple on Tychus. Yeah, Banana Apple on Tychus is going to be their backline DPS. We're going to have to see if we can actually keep him alive with the help of the Rhaegar and that Tyrande played out by Thames and Guardian Wisp. Now a really good frontliner here, Mighty Churros. We've been seeing these two warriors face off time and again. The Diablo on one side, now the ETC for the Churros is going to be their frontliner. But into the support role, they're actually going to put up right wing. And this is a fantastic situation for the Mighty Churros. They have two heroes with potential global presence. That they do, which means they can be grabbing as much experience and not have to show up to the fight until the last second, which they'll have, be able to help out no their teammates. Way. Yeah, wait. No it's way. It's gonna be murky. Okay, so this hero is a no little bit way. different. This is a fun hero, very, very different in a way. Um, we're going to have to see what exactly the team wants to do with it, but Murky is a hero um, that w is a little bit odd. You're going you're gonna to enjoy watching this little guy. <laughs> I mean, Rutgers was, was not really picked to win, so this is the underdog story. If they win with a Murky, we are going to expect a lot of underdog stories to start going that way as well. He's just not a pick we see a lot of. Yeah, a quick recap for you guys. Murky is a hero that has way less health than a majority of the other heroes in the game. He can be taken care of really quickly. He's meant to be really annoying. He will constantly be in your face, but you can give him really quickly as he has a small health bar. Very, very, very smart. But he has a mechanic that's very awkward. He has an egg that he can place down anywhere on the map. If he dies, he will respawn from that egg in less than three seconds. So aggressive egg placement can allow allow you to be an aggressive, annoying little murloc, that's what he is, and really to show up and kind of harass people down over time. He's going to be fun to watch, man, because he is very, very different. Now, we talk a lot about powerful heroes, powerful picks, but at the same time, Murky, uh, he's, he's not a powerful pick in that regard, but he will wear you down. Yeah. You take him down, he, if he takes a, a chunk of your hit points with him, he'll come back, take another. Come back, take another. He's not worth a full hero kill, just like the Lost Vikings that we've seen before, but at the same time, he will wear you down. Tricks, I'm going to be leaving a lot of the murky insight to you. I know you really love that hero, but I for now, let's talk about the Mighty Churros. I am incredibly excited, Jester. Jumping into the Mighty Churros, we have Dialect up in the top left corner here for ETC. Wilted on Brightwing, Buck Nasty on Sylvanas, Graze Robber on Vala, and Kays on Jaina. Those three ladies repping the 
the, uh, the Tigers and the nice little horse. On the very far right, we have Fate on Diablo, Guardian, Wisp on Rhaegar, Platypus here on Murky, beautiful skin, by the way, then Apple on Tychus, and then, of course, uh, the last hero overall is going to be Tyrande. And, uh, yeah, he's actually has the Easter egg skin yeah. <laughs> that recently came out a couple of weeks ago. So uh, still festive in the whole Easter uh, mentality. It's the funny bunny Murky, mm -hmm. but do not mistake uh, you know those uh, comical looks because he definitely has claws. Now, what do you do with a Murky here, Trixler? Well, in the early game, you're going to watch Murky do a lot of things in terms of throwing down his puppet fish. Let's go ahead and look in lane. He's going to try his best to absorb experience for his team. He's actually really strong when he gets to level 10 because he has abilities that allows him to lock down a target or, of course, put in an AoE um, a little Murky, Murkies that will actually jump on top of opponents and slow them down. So Platypus here is going to put his egg next to the fort. He's going to drop his puppet fish on the wave and try his best to soak lane experience and not be taken out. Because, um, of course, if he is killed off, he will give a quarter experience to the opposing or to the opposing team. But he will come back very quickly. That is the more annoying part of facing up against a Murky. Is Platypus a master level Murky? Time will tell. Let's take a quick look at the top lane, however, because we do have a little bit of roaming around, some ambushes possibly being set up. You see Fate and Thames sticking together. The Diablo to Ronda combo. They were the first and second pick for the team here from Eternal Envy. And this is what they like to do earlier on. They're going to try to set up an ambush and look for a takedown early so that they can grab a little bit more of an experience lead by removing the experience gained from the opponent's lane. All right, so in the middle lane, we see Gray's Robber in potential to be picked off by this combo. However, Gray's Robber does have a, uh, a quick getaway that he can use. It's a vault that will allow her to uh, get away from the area. So watch for Fate and teams are waiting for the opportunity to go ahead and move on in. Let's go ahead and check out the top lane, though, as we're going to be seeing Jaina, Brightwing, and Buck Nasty, Kays, and Wilted, um, all in this area trying to push down the lane. These are three people here. Ben Apple has to just try and not give up any takedown to do his best to defend against this. And he has the tools. He has his grenade. He has a huge uh, machine gun as well that can really help him uh, whittle down those, uh, those, uh, those pushing lanes. Normally, I would say you want to be supporting your tankers early on with some of your supports, perhaps one of the warriors. But again, they have the murky on this map. So the three hero push in the mid, leaving Benapo by himself. He's not going to win this lane whatsoever, but he just needs to try to deter as much damage until later as he can. Now, we are past the two-minute mark here, Trixler, as well. We've gone to see the timings for those tributes spawning in just a few seconds. Okay, so they will be showing up pretty soon here. It is a little bit on the random side, but you can kind of guess that it is after two minutes, of course, and it should be here before three minutes. So uh, we see teams waiting around. I like Fate and Tames coming and up here before a tribute does spawn, by the way, just because they can pick someone that may transition down to the bottom area. So they're waiting for them to transition to the tribute. Tribute spawning is important here. There is Fate and Tames waiting for their opponents to come in. They want to get Brightwing or Jaina if possible. Oh man, that scouting probe was so good, but unfortunately the combo is not there. Fate and Tames, they look to actually lock down Wilted so that Benapple can get some big damage on top of her, but unfortunately the Fate was a little bit too over aggressive with that shadow charge and it actually saved Wilted from that stun from Tames. Either way though, they went top and they actually did pay off with that positioning, but now they need to capitalize on this tribute. Okay, so four members here are in the top lane. One, so three for the red team. Internal Envy is going to try and delay this. He's trying to grab as much experience as possible. Tames in trouble though. He gets picked off. Fate in trouble as well as Wilted's going for the body blocks. Fate goes down and Benapple is the only hero left here with a majority of Mighty Churros grabbing this tribute. Nicely done here for the Mighty Churros. Let's look at the bottom lane and see how the uh, the Murky is doing as uh, Platypus is trying his best to keep up with the experience overall. Right now it is six to six and score with the uh, the uh, Mighty Churros just a little bit ahead. Now we did see Platypus actually ease up a little bit in pressure, but he is now back into this lane. De Delectra there has actually been doing really good with the pushing power here of Platypus, but you can see on the left hand side those towers are actually starting to take a little bit more of a beating. Oh uh, yeah, that they are a little bit on the lower side, but the uh, towers in the top side are taking a bit of a beating as well as both turrets. Not there. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, both of them have uh, been uh, annihilated from this battleground, if you will. Fate and Tames trying their best to get some kind of aggression in, but Wilted, the Brightwing player, does have that scouting drone that we saw in a match a couple of matches ago, which allows you to reveal a small area, which is a great deterrent for this combo that we see here from Internal Envy. Now we didn't really get to see scouting drone a lot, you know, months, weeks, even uh, I want to say days ago, but it has definitely become now a more mainstay pick. It's only available to a few heroes, and would you believe that actually both of them that can grab it are on the side of the Mighty Churros? 
Let's check out the middle lane. We haven't been there in a while, just to get an idea of how it's going. We have Guardian Wisp and the Grave Robber just going back and forth. Overall, for the most part, this lane is very uh, stalemate -y. Yes. Um, really, Bala can't do too much to kill or take out Guardian Wisp um, in a fast manner just because he has the heals, he has support. But at the same time, Guardian Wisp doesn't have the damage to take out Bala. So back and forth it'll be. Having the solo lane Rhaegar, I always never want to have a solo lane Rhaegar when you're on your team. And that's not really the fault here of Guardian Wisp. It's just how the lane's actually sorted out. But again, looking for this combo. Fate goes in, but the Lunar Flare does not follow up. And now low hit points across that Diablo. He's actually going to be down. Murky will come back very quickly quickly from Platypus, but he still has that little bit of delay. Graves Robber is now pushing forward, creating the space needed for Wilton to grab that tribute. But here's Platypus, who's back from that egg, and he will try to just stop out this tribute, but it's not going to be enough. Graves Robber and crew now have two tributes in their pocket. Yeah, Internal Envy realized that they couldn't do anything as soon as they lost Fate there, who's his main engager overall, so they had to pull back. They went to other lanes. In fact, Tychus and Rhaegar went to the very top. As we see Mighty Churros grabbing the Mercenary Camp, we do have Tychus and Rhaegar at the very uh, top of the map trying to push in this lane and try to grab some turrets if possible. They're only a little bit behind experience, but if you grab these turrets, they will be actually a little bit ahead here, which could put them at level 10 a little bit faster, which they need, by the way, for the next tribute. Now, I like this better. Guardian Wisp, not by himself, is supporting a damage dealer, and Benapple is starting to really show what he could do when he has that chance to push forward. They immediately take that gate, and that's going to be some good experience that they need because they are behind when it comes to that race to 10. And we're about to see the heroics granted to the mighty churros and now you know the timing is really there because the third tribute and they have the heroic tier unlocked that's a really big step forward for a curse. Okay, so the internal envy needs to get rid of this wave. They know that. If they get rid of this wave, they'll be able to get 10. So you see them all here focusing down. Even the little Murloc has shown up to help out as well. They'll be able to get rid of all the uh, minions here. And now, level 10 has been granted to the red team as well. But the tribute has spawned in the favor of the mighty churros down here in the bottom left corner. They're already set up. Palatopus seems to want to be the one to start the engagement. If he can get on top of one of those ladies there, Sylvanas or Graze Robert, they could really potentially do a lot of damage. It looks like he has not picked his heroic yet. <laughs> <laughs> what did you get? Octograph. Okay, so Octograph allows him to do an instant engagement and really just lock down someone for a couple of seconds, which allows his team to focus him down. So let's watch out for Platypus and Fate here as they're their main engagers for internal envy. The big thing here as well is Platypus put down the egg right there in that little horseshoe. So if he even does get taken down, he's going to be able to come back very, very quickly into the fight. But here comes the engage. Fate goes forward, has the lightning breath ready to go. They're looking for the kill on top of Graves Robert, but they cannot take him down. Instead, we have the laser there from Ben Apple. It's getting off some pretty decent damage is finally going to drop. There goes Murky. He's going to be back very quickly, remember, but Diablo is going to get hooked, and he's now out of this fight. Thames is going to drop here as well. Delectro there with that power slide, able to secure that one. Now, Pilatipus doesn't have the hit points. He still has that egg there. They don't know that, but he cannot get anywhere near that tribute, and three up, three down. It is the mighty Churro's advantage. Yeah, for the comp for internal NB, they really need to take out someone very, very quickly in a fight. They simply do not have sustain to stay in, because Wilted here will continuously heal uh, members around him at any point. So you see the real team fight coming together for Mighty Churros where Internal Envy has more of a gimmick. They have to get to an engagement, get rid of someone really quickly, and then they take actual numbers to win team fights. So they need to be a little bit coordinated. Overall, though, the Mighty Churros wickedating some pressure in their lanes are going to be able to have um, potentially the fort take some damage in the top lane as well as the fort in the bottom lane as they just grab that golem. So Murky is the only hero down here on the bottom. Let's go check it out. That is actually defending against this golem that's doing some damage to the turrets while the rest of the team is all in the middle for Internal Envy, and they cannot hold this five-person push that's coming their way. Yeah, the, the five-man stack here from the Mighty Churros, I mean, they are really pulling together their power as a team, and because of that, you know, this fort is not going to fight back. The red team curse is about to finish up. has five seconds left on it, but overall, they were able to get the top fort, now the mid, but, oh, could this actually be a return kill from Fate and that Lightning Breath? Churro uh, is really just now more on the back foot. That murky aggression with those heroics was, caught them a little bit off guard, but they still had enough escape mechanism under their belt to get to safety. So the Mighty Churros have picked up an ability called Cleanse that are actually helping out a lot. Wicked is the one that's utilizing it, and whenever we have Palatopus jump on a member of Mighty Churros, you see uh, Wicked just use Cleanse and immediately save them, which is really preventing this pickoff composition from happening for internal envy. They do push down the bottom lane, and they need to grab experience to get to level
level 13. The Mighty Churros overall have not had that many deaths. In fact, they've only actually had zero. <laughs> so Not that many at all. Not many at all. So they're doing very well in team fights. They seem to be a little bit more coordinated, and the Mighty Churros are keeping in the pressure at the top right corner as they are now grabbing the golem for them to have that pressure at the top lane. Unfortunately, Platypus there is not going to be able to put up any kind of fight. Electra is on that point, and here comes the second Grave Golem. In fact, we are even going to see Platypus die right there. But he will come back because he has that egg. No death is forever for a Murky with an egg up. Yeah, yeah, the egg has to be get rid of first, and then they have to take down Murky to finally get rid of him. But if you're doing that, you're actually wasting time, and I believe the Mighty Churros realize that. They haven't been hunting down that egg. They've only do been doing what they have to do and keeping their eye on the prize, which have been the objectives, the golems, the tributes, these bruiser camps as well. They're keeping the pressure up in the top lane, and right now, Internal Envy is holding on for dear life, but they have to make some plays pretty soon here before we get to the mid to late game, because right now, how the Mighty Heroes are playing, they look like they could really just take this game. It actually could even be as quick as the next few moments. Not only do we have multiple forts into the name of Mighty Churros, but they started working on a lot of these gates. We're missing ammo, we're missing hit points, and despite the fact that we actually have a mule for Eternal Envy, they are still losing out really highly on the siege damage. Now, we've seen the mule a few times, and we'll show it again to you. Don't worry about that. But Platypus, you know, again, Trixler, I know you play a lot of Murky. I would actually rather see Platypus maybe not in the team fights, but trying to do more split pushing. Yeah, he, he can certainly try that. It's actually a little bit hard to pull off as a Platypus. Not on him, uh, but it's hard for the team internal envy. Right now, they're behind at the moment, and maybe coming back is a way to split push, but my heroes have been on point with the whole, oh, well, Platypus is split pushing in a different lane. Let's cause a team fight. Let's go in a team fight, take out their members, and take out more objectives than him. Platypus is just a small little burlock. He can't trade that efficiently with five members pushing down a middle lane, right? Um, so I could see some split pushing happening here and there, but it's got to be sneaky. It's got to be quick. Overall, though, it looks like we might have a fight as Internal Envy is set up for this tribute. We have uh, uh, Buck Nasty, Ks, and Graves Robber right to uh, really apply that damage in a team fight. Now, they do get actually noticed. We have the far sight on Rhaegar. We just saw that uh, Eternal Envy, they know exactly what's up. The Mighty Churros are right there, and they have their number. The problem is, so far, they haven't really won a lot of these engages. As we said, zero kills. Uh, sorry, zero takedowns to their name. Fate going to be trying to put up the front line, and Platypus is there as well, but there is a big potential of Platypus actually getting bursted down and removed out of this fight, and then a fly before will occur. Okay, Graves Robber starting to grab the tribute here. Banapple wants to get in here if possible. Thames has some ability to kind of delay that with uh, her ability, so watch out for Thames overall. The egg has been put down for Platypus, which means the engagement will be happening very, very soon. Banapple in the top right corner. Watch for his laser. It's going to be important in this team fight as Fate is just posturing back and forth, looking for a way to move in. I'm actually real surprised at the hesitance, but now Fate is going to be the one to break the sign. It goes on in. Murky immediately goes down. Thames, unfortunately, just does not have the support of his team and she's gonna drop as well now fate with that lightning breath has the laser there as well good heal from guardian wisp but i'm not entirely too sure the damage is there for eternal envy they are now very much on the retreat and for the only one out of three tribute score that we're going to grant here for Mighty Churros. We really did lose a lot in terms of the map from Eternal Envy. That they did. Eternal Envy lost that fight really, really quickly just they not because... do anything about the... Yeah, <laughs> no, they don't. They got placed down once again yeah. by uh, Murky down in the uh, middle, actually. Uh, so he was able to move it quickly. They were about to, though. And at this point, you see that Mighty Churros is realizing they're pretty decently far ahead. They've got a lot of hordes killed off. They know they have a lot of map pressure overall. They're winning team fights pretty decisively. They're going to go ahead and try and sneak this golem. However, Internal Envy is aware that they are down here and they're moving straight down to the area. They're going to try and potentially get into a fight. Octograb and Starfall is up for the Internal Envy team. Let's see if they can get anything to happen here. Now, the big part of this fight is going to have to be on the capture circle for the Grave Golem. Whichever team gets this is going to have some massive damage ready to go. Delector goes in with that stage drive. Here comes again another Lightning Breath and the heals are actually good. Fate will continue with that Lightning Breath and it is a steal successfully for Eternal Envy. They were on the point, and it was stolen out from the no under the noses of the Mighty Churros. Bait's going to go in, looks for Kays, and the Palatipus is there. That's going to be an ice spot, keeping Kays safe, but unfortunately does not get her a better position, and the collapse is real. Eternal Envy 
now has a good chance to push this gate. That was the play they needed there. They grab the goal and they take it away um, from the Mighty Churros. They will now be focusing down these turrets, getting themselves back into the game. They're about to be 16 and 16 a level. They also get a nice Octogor Crab on uh, Wilted. Wilted will take down a decent amount of HP, and that will give a nice lane here for the uh, Eternal Envy Golem to keep pushing forward. They want to grab this keep, and it looks like they may be able to do so as Jaina is down for 14 more seconds for the Mighty Churros. There is also a tribute that was just snuck there by Murky in the top right corner. So uh, Murky, nice job. Oh, actually, it wasn't uh, Murky, but it was taken away from the blue team. They sucked someone over there. Fate does get picked off here for Diablo. He will spawn immediately, but overall, the Mighty Churros uh, will be able to defend finally, but they do lose a keep. And that's the big important part going back and forth here. Mighty Churros actually does have a, a avenue open to the core and that is going to be continually pushed down by catapults you've seen it time and again you take out a keep you're rewarded with catapults and that's going to be continually a thorn in the side of the mighty churros but going into this now level 16 each side here's a catapult for you as it's going to be continually that thorn but level 16 from each side means that we do have those power up gains on both sides of the fence and would you believe now a little bit of a lead experience wise for eternal envy just a little bit so that play was a very very important for them, they were making the uh, comeback overall. Uh, the golem is available in the top right corner, but unfortunately, a tribute spawns. So the mighty churros decide not to gra go grab it. Indiana University is now moving down the bottom left. Rutgers, remember, the underdogs here are trying their best to secure this tribute. Murky shows up. There's Guardian Wisp. Benapple here as well. The fight is going to be very important here. Watch out for Dialect to go in. Now, Fate is going to be the one that's, uh, quote-unquote, the bait, but uh, throws Delectra over the shoulder. Unfortunately, Delectra can deal with this. Here comes the Lightning Breath. Platypus, once more, is just going to go back to that egg. The Lightning Breath not really hitting the mark, and the Starfall there as well from Thames. That's, uh, that's a lot of heroics already down for Rutgers, and this is not putting them in a good spot. Okay, Rutgers is actually going to get a decent amount of damage down on the Dialogue. Dialogue is in trouble. Platypus moving forward here with the Murky chasing down. Graze Robber, they will secure the kill. Fate overall does a nice combo, and five members are still up here for internal envy. It looks like they will be able to grab this tribute. Nicely done for them, Murky and Diablo. The combo was finally able to take out Avala. If only it was a Murkablo, we could call them the father-son one-two punch. If but, only. Uh, if it's only. just not this round. Multiple skins do exist out there, and this one is uh, a fairly menacing one, though, as well. We did have mercenaries on both sides of the fence actually pushing down lanes while all that was happening. Of course, the bottom one here that we see cleaned up, we actually still have the Siege Giants pushing down from the Mighty Churls into the top lane, but it's going to be more about this upcoming fight at this Great Bowl. These Giants, by the way, we were able to take down a fort um, as they were left uncontested. The internal MV team, realizing they need to do something here, are finally grabbing their own golem. Overall, though, it seems our team fights are oh, getting a little bit more there, crispier. Oh, got to be careful there, to be careful. That golem does hurt when it hits you. That stun and punch combo, it really does take a beating. Another tribute has now spawned in the very far center middle. Uh, we'll see a tribute spawning, and it looks like the Mighty Churros are already in place to grab it. Platypus is putting his egg down. He needs to be careful, though. You don't want to telegraph that your egg is there. He's actually shown Dialaka there that there is a egg. If that gets killed off, Murky can be uh, destroyed. Fate charges in. Platypus trying to help out. He throws down a puppet fish on top of the tribute. The uh, Ancestor Healing is used for Guardian Wisp, which may have been a bit too early. A little bit early indeed, but, you know, Fate back to the full hit points, gets into the positioning. Here comes the big lightning breath. It's landing some big damage on top of Buck Nasty, but at the same time, we had the silence arrow, the waning arrow into the back. It did really stop this combo in its tracks from Rutgers. Now you see them on the retreat. Tames low on the hit points, but unfortunately for Grave Robber, he's not going to be able to pick up that takedown. Murky, however, with that egg, is going to continually just be a thorn in the side of the Mighty Churros, spawning and spawning and spawning, but it does look like we're actually a little bit out of gas in the tank, and this is a curse going the way of the Mighty Churros. Really quickly, let's check on the status of the golem that we saw earlier. It's in the very far top left corner that was grabbed by internal MB. It looks like they will be only possibly be getting a uh, turret only, uh, but overall, that golem does slow down the entire curse here for the Mighty Churros. They had to go defend that, so it's a good 10 to 15 seconds wasted. So that's good for internal MB. They're looking okay. It's 18 18 right now. Both teams dead even in experience, but overall in force, um, it looks like it's actually really even right now as it's two for two forts. So this could be anyone's game. The opportunity to end the game here, though, is in the Mighty Churros uh, uh, court, if you will. If they can push here with this curse and get a keep or some other type of infrastructure, they could be in a solid position. Well, there's no forts left on the board here for Eternal Envy, but Rutgers can actually defend out these keeps as best they can. It's only 20 seconds left. It's that top lane that 
they gotta be very worried about because there's no gate there whatsoever. Unfortunately, there's just no presence from the Mighty Churros. They're really kind of lagging behind with those minion waves. So that's why we see this five-man defense mounting into the mid. Now, the curse, five seconds or less left ready to go. So this keep will at least live to see the end of the curse, but will it be enough to deter the Mighty Churros? It looks like the Mighty Churros will potentially pull back here. They realize they're not in a solid state. Murky, by the way, is in the bottom left corner. Platypus uh, playing that character, trying to find some kind of way to maybe pick somebody off here with that Octograd combo. Remember, at level 20, you actually will get a little bit more powerful with that combo, too. If as he gets, if he, uh, gets the, uh, the ability to always to go fully with it. Um, looking at the uh, the build for the Murky, is he's put a lot of damage in his Puff of Fish, so that means he has to hit the combo to really utilize that to his advantage. Now we do have another Grave Golem spawn and ready to go. You see it's a big point of contention because Eternal Envy, they're going to put Pilatipus to try to just you know, stop He's this cap. And, well, I mean, he successfully stopped for a little bit, but also committing a Starfall to this. This is actually now turning a... Uh, going for the worse here for Rutgers. Yeah, they've hit level 20. The uh, internal MV needs to get 20 of themselves, and they're a little bit behind in terms of grabbing it. Uh, Platypus will try to defend against the Skull and Maul by himself with Bait, Benapple, Tames, and Guardian with finally showing up. But during all this, in the middle lane, the uh, blue team, Mighty Churros, is starting to mount a push. They're heading straight for the keep. They realize their opponents are in a different lane defending against that gold they just grabbed, which means they have a potential free keep to grab here. And the uh, red team, let's go look at them real quick. Internal MV is actually still in the bottom dealing with a golem. This keep is for sure dead. Golems get stronger and stronger as time goes on. So these late game grave golems are very important objectives for these teams to start trying to capture. And so far we've been seeing a lot of map control afforded to the mighty churros. Now, as you said, they get that mid keep. Sylvanas with that split push potential with those black arrows as her trait disables any kind of fight back for a lot of infrastructure. So it's a very easy uh, you know, destruction when the, t the keep, the fort, the core cannot fire back. Okay, so the next tribute will be spawning very, very soon here. Remember, Eternal Envy does have one out of three tributes they need. Uh, for the Mighty Churros, they're currently at 0-3, but they do have the map pressure. In fact, on the left side of the map, they have just now grabbed Sea Giants, and they're going to be grabbing their Bruisers as well. So they'll have the middle lane and the top lane pushing for them. Internal Envy will notice that their opponents just grabbed this, which means they may be able to set up a fight. Everyone is kind of queued up on the right side of here, but they got to watch out. they got to be grouped up, and they got to make sure if they go in for a pick, that is decisive. They have to make the play here because it is a late game. If you fall behind, if there's any time that you miss out on a huge opportunity, your opponents can end the game right then and there. And I want to point out that these teams are really sticking together. Platypus, you know, he does have that bubble ready to go, so uh, the bubble does remove him out of harm's way temporarily. So using the Murky as a scout is actually a really good idea because he puts down that egg, which means once more, if he does get taken out, he's also not going to be the forerunner here for those tributes he will just come back very quickly and start wearing down those opponents. Level 20 on both sides. This isn't going to be a curse if either side grabs the tribute, but neither side is actually letting up. The problem is for the internal MVs, they have to grab the tribute because right now in the middle and the uh, top lane, they have a lot of mercenaries that are pushing into their base, which means they have to pull back. Platypus will try his best to uh, delay this, but it looks like the uh, tribute will be going to the Mighty Churros. And if we look in the middle lane, you can see that the rest of the team was forced to defend with these catapults, these bruisers, all these things pushing their lane. Also in the top lane, they're defending against that as well. They have pressure coming out from every single angle, and they have to find a way to alleviate the pressure and then go into a team fight. They are for sure at a disadvantage right now. And that's the problem. When you don't have keeps in those lanes, you have to deal with catapults. Now, this entire time, the Mighty Turtles has been dealing with the bottom lane catapults, but if you take a quick look down there, you're going to see a familiar face, ETC, with that global presence, with that stage drive. He can do things like this, where he can just start pushing it back and giving themselves a lot of Ooh, breathing room go and the middle still lane. stage drive. It looks like we might have a fight. Will to get caught out of position. There goes the object grab, and Will to just taken out immediately here. Murky was taken away, but remember, he'll be responding very, very soon here. Wow. Guardian with gets an amazing heal on Fate. Fate <laughs> charging forward. Daylac in trouble. Rutgers, the underdogs. Are they going to secure a win here? Daylac is running away. He's stunned there from Tames. Tames looking great. Graze Robert coming in and here comes Murky Platypus charging forward. It looks like two takedowns have occurred here and all five members are up for internal envy. Beautiful play. A nice pickoff for them and there is also a tribute in the bottom right corner. They could go grab but it looks like they may want to keep pushing here, Jester. The, the big burst and the instant kill right there on top of that bright wing. I mean, with that takedown, she's gonna be out of the game for you know, 60 seconds at this point. And without a support to heal, you know, the lovely ladies of Mighty Churro, 
they cannot engage because there's no uh, safety net for them. There's nobody to retreat to. It's if you get hit, you got to start running. And that is not really a big team fight mentality. This was phenomenal for Eternal Envy. Okay. After all that, Eternal Envy, we have Palatibus run down and grab the tribute. The rest of the team came up here to the top lane. They're grabbing the Golem. They're getting things to swing into their favor. Mm -hmm. They're getting momentum Great here. Team. Can they keep pushing the momentum? That's the real question. They have the ability to pick off. We just noticed it. It's a matter of making those surprise happen more often. If you're the Mighty Churros, you're going to start staying a little bit more grouped and you're gonna make sure that you're not going to walk into situations where you get picked off like that. But right now, the Mighty Churros, uh, the Mighty Churros on their back foot, have to defend the top lane. They have that huge golem coming their way, and that's their main objective right now. Unfortunately for Eternal Envy, I mean, they're not really able to deter the big collapse on top of this golem. So even by the time it gets to these towers, to the keep, it's going to be down half health. It's just not going to be the objective uh, grabber that Eternal Envy wanted, but they do maintain map positioning for this. We are going to have another tribute in the next few moments. This top lane golem has forced the Mighty Churros into the defense up there, and now with that far sight, they're gonna notice, hey, they're on their way down here. We either need to finish this up or plan an ambush. The internal envy is now grabbing the golem themselves and uh, it's gonna be the opposing golem and it looks like they'll secure it just barely before the churros can show up and help out. And luckily for them, we did oh, have wow. a tribute spawn for them. However, <laughs> the egg is in a weird position. The egg is in a little bit of a weird position, but this is a phenomenal position because now eternal envy has a grave golem. Oh, it's just enough to lecture with the split second timing with that stage drive comes on into this. We got the Ancestral on top of Fate. Fate Bug is Nasty. keeping the rest of the team away. Bug Nasty gets uh, almost picked off there by Platypus. The egg is still alive, by the way. Delac is in trouble. Four members take him off. Grave Robber in trouble. Platypus, Platypus coming in from the side. He's a brave little Burlock going for Graze Robber. K is in trouble as well. Grave Robber does get away, but K is unfortunately not as lucky as it looks like he may get picked off. That's three members down for the blue team. And Mighty curse. Churros are in trouble. Internal Envy, oh are they going to push? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. They, there's a Grave Golem on the core. Core damage is starting to actually add up on top of Mighty Churros, and that is a very healthy 25-minute Grave Golem. I think that actually just might end the game by itself. Have the underdogs won? Can they do it? It looks like it. They run straight to the core, and game number one will be going to Internal MB Rutgers, the underdog. Only 5% of brackets actually picked them to get this far are going into the game two with a win. I, I have all these stats in front of me that says Murky is not a pick. Stats don't mean nothing. You it, see this? Murky's not a pick, but Rutgers come in not only as the Down underdog, man. but at the same time, they bring a Murky into this, something that we just do not see when it comes to more competitive Heroes of the Storm. They, they made it look good. I, I gotta say, Palatopus really knew how to use that Murky. The early game, maybe not so much, but very solid for an ending. Here's the thing. Mighty Churros in the early game are playing fantastic in terms of posture and composure. They realized their opponents were using Murky to lock down someone with an Octograph. Right. They would use an ability called Cleanse to save their teammate, and then they would win the team fight. You can only do that once. You can only do that a couple of times. Yeah. And the thing is, is the internal Envy team realized this. They started not fully doing a full engage with Platypus right. and allowing Diablo to go in for the charge, forcing the Cleanse out, and then Murky would go for the engage on a really weak member. And then then, with just pure laser and a nice job of mechanics, they're able to secure the win. Crazy game. Crazy game. So Eternal Envy put a point on the board. This will now be the map choice here for the Mighty Churros as we go into game number two. Uh, I, don't, I don't foresee a Murky like, counter pick to be coming out because just nobody ever expects to see Murky these days. But this could be the turning point in that Murloc's career. Right here. Okay, guys. <laughs> well, game number two will be coming at you pretty soon. We'll see if the Mighty Churros can turn it around. Maybe they'll still murk you away. Regardless, we'll come back after a quick commercial break, and we'll be going to Dragonshire.